Okay, hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, good. Okay, here's the financial report. Actually, it's pretty brief. There were no transactions from last month. So our balance remains at 5,453 and 42 cents. If anyone has a question or a comment, let me know. Very quiet. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. On yet. Yeah, the lieutenant is going to join us. He just had to hook up someplace, wherever he was. Um, Come on, Diane. Carmen. It's available. Oh, he's here. I see him. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. The lieutenant is here. Great. I was just trying to get to a spot that I didn't have rain. I wasn't getting rained on so you guys could hear me. <laughs> um, so thank you, Diane. Um, uh, honestly, the last month was pretty good for Fairhaven. Um, we've had uh, some interesting challenges. Uh, most recently in the last couple of weeks, uh, some of my biggest concerns are um, with the increase of people hanging out in the area of um, Grand and Ferry, Grand and Poplar. Um, we've had, unfortunately, two incidents of gunfire in that area over the last week or so. And so um, we are uh, working on that. Uh, we have a, a lot of government is um, when the same names keep coming up for us. People that we've already already arrested with firearms that officers have already seized firearms from um, that are uh, still coming up as topics and people who are involved in different uh, crimes. That's no different than, uh, honestly, the three incidents of gunfire that Fairhaven had in the last month. Um, the one at Ferry and uh, Peck Street, um, that happened earlier on in the month. Uh, officers responded to a call for uh, a person shot at the intersection of Ferry and Peck Street. And when they arrived there, um, they were able to uh, identify a person who was the victim of, of that shooting. Um, officers were able to, um, with some video surveillance and um, some more information, able to uh, do a, a, a good job identifying the people that were involved with that. So we have some warrants forthcoming for that, which is uh, fantastic. Um, as you all know from a, a lot of our shootings, generally they take, or any of our shootings, um, they take where people are shot. It's a little bit more uh, investigation is required. There's a lot more to it. Um, honestly, when we have video cameras and, and the public um, is willing to give us information, which we've gotten a lot of really good information from, uh, we are able to um, turn it around rather quickly. Our shooting task force is working nonstop. Uh, we have plainclothes officers that are out in the, in the district helping us out. Those are officers from other departments that are working in conjunction on a different, on a task force that is run by New Haven, uh, but they're out uh, all over New Haven looking for people who are um, engaged in violent crime. And so that's their task day in and day out. Um, there's been a lot of really good work done by those officers. Um, we've seized, uh, I think, I'm not sure if the number is over 110, but when I checked yesterday, uh, we'd seized 110 guns off of people in the city of New Haven this year so far, uh, which is pretty staggering. That's a very high number um, for us. Um, our units, our intel units, our plainclothes units, uh, officers on the street are seizing a lot of firearms from people. Um, so it's a good thing because we're getting firearms off the street. It's a bad thing because there are so many firearms out there on the street. Um, so I, I know I say it every meeting, but if you have information, um, we continually get good information. And so if you have information about someone who um, was involved in a shooting or there's, um, you know, a vehicle that you know of, um, if people are uh, involved in uh, habitually selling drugs in certain areas, um, you could certainly reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to the non-emergency number. You can also reach out to uh, the anonymous tip line that the department has. Um, all of those things, um, we get a lot of really good results from that stuff. Uh, from people who are reaching out. You can remain anonymous. Um, we do the legwork afterwards. We have a lot of really good investigative tools. And so that's been really productive. Um, in the last uh, 
couple of weeks, we had uh, an issue with uh, one. So I've mentioned it before where one person can really impact the amount of crime that's happening uh, in a specific area. And so one person in particular, there was a, a woman who um, is not from Fairhaven. She does not, she hasn't spent a lot of time out here. Um, she was not familiar to me and the officers, um, but over the last, um, let's see, she was arrested and charged with, let me find the actual incident. She was responsible for a robbery, a home invasion, and multiple larcenies from vehicle and a stolen car. Um, and so that's five of our major crimes that would come up. Um, that one person was responsible for all of them. She was charged with a bunch of them. Um, she's an individual who, what she did is um, she has some addiction uh, issues and um, she was um, committing these crimes to feed her addiction, unfortunately. And so um, we were able to, she had broken into someone's house on Grand Avenue. Um, and uh, the people called the police immediately. We were in the area. So we were able to, uh, officers got there. Um, she had produced a knife and tried to rob some people inside the house. Um, she fled on foot when officers arrived. Officers were able to find her hiding in a dumpster uh, behind 214 uh, Grand Avenue. And so when she uh, was apprehended, they, um, a couple other people came forward and identified her as being uh, committing other crimes in the past week. And so officers did a few investigations, got some surveillance footage, and uh, we, we were able to arrest her. Um, and, and she is currently still um, incarcerated. What's interesting is then um, all of those statistics um, go away. So one person really has an impact. Um, especially somebody who's in her particular situation. Um, in another incident, officers, uh, she stole a car. Someone left a car running in uh, at Grand and Ferry. Um, she jumped in the car and stole the car. Uh, her family, I'm sorry, the victim's family followed her uh, in that car to the point where officers were able to uh, intervene and officers were able to apprehend her and arrest her for that charge as well. That was before the home invasion occurred. Um, and so she's still incarcerated. She was charged for all of those crimes. Um, and really between her and a couple of the incidents of gunfire uh, at Grand and Ferry, um, Fairhaven's been pretty good. We're working on Grand Avenue. We're working on uh, some staffing things with the police department so that uh, I'd love to, I'd love to have a walkie beat on Grand Avenue every single day. Um, but we're, we're really going through some challenges with our staffing issues um, right now with the department uh, last week. We held over 74, we had, there were 74 shifts where we hold off, held officers where they thought they were going home at the end of their shift and we forced them to stay for another eight hours um, just because of some of our staffing shortages. And so we're working with that. I'm trying to see, um, we have all the approval to, to put officers out there. Um, it's just getting people who are well rested to, to get out on the street for us and, and walk the beat out on Grand Avenue. So um, it should be coming at some point over the summer here and there. Um, so that's what we're, we're looking to improve um, a lot of the things that are going on on Grand Avenue. I know there's chronic hanging out. I get a lot of complaints about um, people engaged in um, using drugs, selling drugs. Um, and so we're, we're working to identify the people who are selling drugs um, and then conducting investigations to, to arrest them. So uh, the officers that are here are working diligently. They're out all the time at a lot of different locations. Um, so if you have any information or, or you see anything, um, feel free. I'll put my number in here like I always do. Um, if there's any information or you need any help with the police department or um, any issues that I can help help you work through or help people work through in the district, uh, feel free to reach out to me and we can try to make it happen. Any questions? We have one that has a question. You want to come up here, Robbie, so they can hear you. Hey, Robbie. How are you? Welcome. Good. How are you? We on Zoom can't hear you. Can you repeat what you said? We just heard congratulations. 
I think you might be getting too close to the mic if you could try sitting back and speaking from there. Congratulations on the you award you got the other day. Oh, thank you very much, Robbie. I appreciate it. Also, um, I know Grand Avenue is a, a, a busy place, but um, also our areas, we can, uh, if, if we get the extra help, we can use um, some motor vehicle infractions around the rest of Fairhaven. Um, we got a lot of cars still with um, expired temporary plates driving around and um, a lot of motor vehicle uh, violations. I know you guys are doing a good job, but if we can branch out besides Grand Avenue, I appreciate it. Of course, Robbie, no problem. I have them, so the motorcycle units um, are out. They were on Tech Street after I got a few complaints on Tech Street. Uh, they were doing motor vehicle enforcement out there. We've had uh, officers on Front Street, specifically Front and Lewis, doing some enforcement over there. Um, also, Clinton Avenue. Uh, last night, officers got into a chase with a car that was used in carjackings. Uh, a person jumped out of that car last night, and uh, officers were able to apprehend him. He had 40 bags of heroin on him um, and a lot of cash. So officers are doing that, but we're trying our best to, to keep it up. Um, Clinton Avenue, Lombard Street, uh, Ferry, uh, Grand Avenue isn't just the priority. Um, it is it is one of um, the, the places where we want police presence, uh, but we certainly can spread it out across the district. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Robbie. Have a good night. Be, good to see you. Be safe. All right. We have another question on Zoom. Uh, Lee? Yes. Lieutenant Fumiati, um, uh, two part. First is... Does the police department still do standing orders for businesses that want anyone that's in front of their business not doing business with them to be moved along by the police if they see them? Do you still do that? Um, so yes and no, Lee. <laughs> um, so yes, we do still do that, um, but it's, it's generally only if the property is owned by the person. And so um, standing in front of a business is a different thing. We can work with that. Um, but basically what I would have you do is have the business fill out the standing no trespass order, depending upon who it was. Um, we do it all the time. And then what that does is that tells, um, so landlords typically will do that. And so officers can enter property, um, not people's houses. Um, mm -hmm. They can enter common spaces. They can go onto the driveway. They can go into the garage if, if that's common property. Um, if they're a business owner, that allows officers, uh, the business owner doesn't necessarily have to be there. They can say, we don't want people hanging out when they're not engaged in business. And then the officers can take enforcement action uh, on that. Um, so yeah, Lee, we still do that. What I'll do is I'll email you um, the e-version of that document. And then what they do is just print it out. Um, they can either uh, enter it manually in the computer and send it back to me, or they can print it out and drop it off at the substation. Either one works and uh, we can get that on file. And then I let the officers know, and then they pay special attention to those specific areas. That's perfect. I really appreciate the explanation. It is what I thought, but it's good that everyone hear this. So I'm asking you, because a very particular, specific business owner on Grand Avenue, who is currently not having a problem, but can see as the summer warms up that it could happen, so mm -hmm. you send me that form, I will get it to him, have him deal directly with you. But also everyone else should know that this is an option to offer that up to the police. It's not for everyone. Not everyone feels comfortable with it, but now you know it can be done. And thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's great, Lee. Thank you. Senator, we have another question, please. Yes, Lee. How you doing, Lieutenant? <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, once again, congratulations. Hey, Robert, you, I'm doing fine, thank you. A few issues I got that I get. First of all, uh, that's cool. Uh, I think it's, it's Elm Elementary in the corner of James. And Lombard, something's gotta be done with those cars parking in the morning. Somebody almost got hit, hit a kid this morning when I passed by, actually tw twice. And there's something's gotta be done in that corner. Second, uh, as, as we speak right now, there's a car parked right on the sidewalk in front of Nino's uh, store. 
I called before for that car to be moved. He's there all day long, every day, blocking the sidewalk. Third, uh, somebody named Vinny something called me from Chatham, and I gotta give you his the phone number. He wants to talk to you. He's saying that cars are coming up poplar and turning against the one way to not to go to Lombard, go around the loop. So he's, they're doing that a lot. He say oh, a kid almost got hit today, and uh, and that that's basically it. I just want to make sure, make you aware of the situation. Uh, see if you could do something about it. He said, usually he said in the afternoon, when cars try to cut through Chatham to that one way, they go against the one way, that little, that piece that ends up in Pan del Cielo right there. Okay, Alder, so the, the wrong way on Chatham from Poplar to Ferry, uh, yeah. that's one, which is good. I'll have officers, up. I'm concerned with um, uh, uh, the uptick. It's interesting you brought up Nino's, but there has been an uptick in people hanging out in the intersection of Ferry and Chatham and Ferry and Limerick. Uh, mm -hmm. in that area. So I have officers out there. Um, I, I believe that the person who parks their car um, on the sidewalk there is the owner or one of the workers at Nino. So I'll just have an officer go talk to them and have them stop that behavior. Yeah, I think um, she works there because I, I talked to her and she was like, no, I work here. So, you know, and still she's blocking the sideway for yeah. uh, somebody with a wheelchair or something. So. And then, sorry, I missed the third thing. What was the third thing? The third thing is the, the Lombard, in the corner of Lombard and James, when all those the cars school, park right. yep. for the school, I mean, that's, I mean, that's dangerous, man. That's very dangerous for kids and for cars. Right. Um, no problem, Alder. We can take care of all three of those. Thank you. Appreciate it. And be safe out there, guys. Hey, Lieutenant, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. It's my first time in this. Excuse, excuse nice me. Just, excuse me. Just a point of order. The people at home don't know who is speaking at the library. So if everyone that comes up could just say who they are as much as they want to say about themselves, just so that those of us that are on can, can just know that it was the, the older or in your case, it's just so that we know who you are. All right, so. Thank you. My name is Diego, I live in English Street. So I just want to bring a uh, issue what's going for a long time in the corner of Peck and Ferry Street. So especially right now, why the bridge is closed in Ferry Street. So we got people going into the store, parking right in the corner. You can barely turn in, into Peck Street. So I think, and I'm seeing everybody here in the, in the meeting shaking their heads. They are with me. I think for now, they have to be a strict parking zone along Peck Street between Ferry and Blatchley, correct? Because in the morning, early in the morning, we got uh, school buses going by there. And, you know, it's a, it's, 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 it's a mess in there. So luckily the last two days I've been seeing uh, a officer in the, in the light in Peck and Blatchley now, kind of directing some traffic, but, but now we had the big problem what's in Peck and Ferry, right in the corner is because people going in, running into the store in fact, right in the corner in the both sides. And you can barely make the turn over there. So if, if you please can do something in there and send some, somebody you know, to watch, and that'd be great. So that's all what I wanna say and thank you very much. No problem, thank you. That's, um, so the Ferry and Peck store has been an issue. Uh, we were able to shut it down um, for a few days. Um, that created quite the reprieve uh, for that area. Um, but that is, uh, I've, I've had the city different uh, city officials out there to look at the construction of that intersection. And so I'm hoping that um, one in the short term, I can have officers um, hang out in that area to try to deter some of that negative behavior, especially parking on the corner. In the morning time, you said it's it's mostly morning commute, like 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. or is it earlier than that? It's basically all the time people trying to go into the store. 
especially okay. you know in the morning is most like you know it, it's worth it <laughs> okay um yeah so i'm hoping that when when there's a redesign of ferry street which should be coming it's in the early stages now that that intersection will actually have a redesign it's one of the parts that i brought up to um the city engineer when they're redesigning that to take a look at um some some different measures that would prevent people from parking illegally in that area um rather than having a police officer sit there but for the time being um that's really this police officer is really our only solution and so i'll try to get them there a little bit more especially during the morning time to deter some of that behavior thank you i appreciate it thank you i think we have a question on the zoom from sarah Derbala. sure if you want to hi <clears throat> Hello. Um, so, <laughs> hi. So my question is, um, now that the summer is approaching, we know that in the summer, things get a little um, hot, uh, pun intended. And so um, just kind of like wondering what, is there any plan to kind of like be um, proactive in terms of like either rise in crime or like um, hangouts, things like that. Um, so just wondering as, as the summer approaches, if there's any conversations that have happened around that. Um, proactive around what specifically? Like just increasing just like, violence? Or? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, so there's have, more people uh, on the road or like on the streets, you know, there's definitely more presence, um, you know, noise, even like noise and parties and things like that, just in general, typical things that happen during the summer. Yeah, so that is that is something that we talk about quite frequently. We have a lot of different uh, things going on citywide, not just in Fairhaven. And so um, we are constantly looking at managing our resources on. Um, so we have a street racing detail. Um, honestly, the bars have been get, getting pretty busy downtown. So anybody who's been going out to um, any of the bars downtown New Haven has seen that there's been an increase. Uh, people are, are back to um, almost pre-COVID. Um, and so we are uh, constantly evaluating how we can get more resources out to different locations, uh, addressing issues, taking enforcement on um, every, all weekend long. We have officers working street racing details. We have officers working dirt bike details. Um, we're doing surveillance on um, a lot of different locations. And that's um, not necessarily just for violent crime. That's also just for quality of life stuff too. Um, so uh, because there's not as many of us, Really, we just need that everyone's help. And so if you have information about anything that's going on, if you've got loud parties, if you know who's hosting parties, if you hear about um, a party that's going to be at an intersection, I know the, the yearly party at one uh, on Blatchley, that's always an issue, is coming up in uh, early July. And so we'll be out there beforehand um, to talk to the people. Where, that are hosting where on Blatchley? Do you know? Yeah, so it's, it's 141 Blatchley. They have a party every single year um, that gets, uh, last year we were able to manage it pretty well. Um, hope, okay. I'm hoping that again this year we can manage it pretty well. Um, so if you get flyers, if you see flyers um, for parties and different things going around the city, different meetups, different mm -hmm. hangout locations, um, send that information to me. And we, we if it's in Fairhaven, um, I address it with our officers uh, and plainclothes officers. But if it's around the city too, um, that information is, is beneficial for us to have um, so that we're ready for all that stuff. But yeah, we are constantly... Uh, evaluating and reevaluating our resources and where we're distributing them. There's a lot of different concerts going around in the city. Um, there's a lot of different things that we need police officers to staff those locations. Um, and so arts and ideas festivals downtown, uh, different parades, different road races. Um, so there's a lot of different things going on that we're constantly looking at um, planning for those events. The more events that we know about, the more we can uh, be ready for them. So yeah, a hundred percent, we're constantly looking um, to be proactive and address any of the issues that are coming towards us, whether it be noise, dirt bikes, um, or violence. Um, the violence stuff I could talk talk about at length, um, but yeah, we, we have a, a, a very large, robust plan on all of that. Awesome. I, um, I, I asked about Blatchley because I know that there's a house that's adjacent from, well, it's, it's on Blatchley side, but um, I don't know if that's the one you're referring to as a yearly party, but they pretty much have parties almost, if not almost every weekend, um, at least, um, you know, and it's twice, three times, four times a weekend, um, or like during the week too. 
Um, I've reported it before, but I don't know the exact address. So it's kind of like hard to report it, but um, I've, I've seen, I've already been hearing um, the music because it's right behind my house. Um, and I'm on Lloyd and I've also been noticing that since Chapel Park, that street got opened, you know how it was like blocked before, um, like on Chapel Park. Um, what is that street? I think it's River Street, is it? The one all the way in the back. Um, since it's been open, there's like a lot of, yeah, I've noticed that there's a lot of cars um, sort of like uh, doing a lot of noise. Um, I don't know if it's racing or if it's um, just doing a lot of driving, but then they're turning on Lloyd and I can, you know, hear that too. So that's why I was also wondering about the noise just in general, because I'm seeing now a lot of activity now that that street is, uh, is open again. Mm -hmm. So that street should not be open. Um, honestly, someone broke the lock. And so we just need to replace the lock on the gate and that'll be closed mm -hmm. again. Got it. Um, for the parties on Blatchley, um, we can try to, um, I, see, I see you sent me a, a separate message here. Um, you and I can, if we want to talk separately, I can, um, I can just send you a message here and we can try to dial in what that address is. And then uh, I can have officers or I can go when we're, uh, when there's not a party and ask them to, to not do that and not have um, those parties. But then also we can get the address and figure out um, when you call, then you can say, hey, it's, you know, one, two, three Main Street. Right, uh, right. That, that makes it easier for everybody then. And then it also makes it easier for the dispatchers and the police officers to find the location. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant, did you see you had a question in the chat from Jennifer Forlano as well? Uh, I can read it too. The people are loitering at the smoke shop next to where Grand Cafe was. Tons of them every day, and they are on the opposite side of the building near the daycare on Grand next door. Can more cops drive around there too? Yes, we have cops there all the time. Uh, I am there all the time. Um, we've been working to try to get some, um, honestly, we have some pretty challenging issues with um, the people openly are um, They're cooperative with the police department, um, but we uh, there's a lot of changes in the legislation around um, the sale of marijuana. And so um, there's there's some logistical things that are difficult um, for us to, to uh, enforce where that's concerned. Uh, but yeah, the officers are um, in that area. That's probably one of the most um, high traffic areas of police officers, um, Grand and uh, East Pearl. We have a lot of officers um, there in and out all the time, clearing those same groups out. Uh, we're identifying individual players and making arrests still. Um, and I'm hoping that we can, um, the environment, we can change that environment over there with some redesign of the parking lot. Um, hopefully get a business or two in there. That'll be a productive uh, neighbor, a, a good neighbor. And uh, that'll change that whole dynamic of that area over there. Uh, but so that's, a, that's an area where we spend a lot of time. So thank you, Jennifer. Uh, and it looks like we have a comment from the library, maybe? You're muted, however. Uh, while the library figures out unmuting, uh, Lee, you had another comment? Just, just, just very quickly regarding Riverfest on Saturday. I was, I'm going to make an announcement later on. But when, Lieutenant Fumiati, I mentioned it to you before, but I just wanted to mention it now, you know, in terms of just police being aware, it is on private property and it's a pretty large property and, and you know, we have no problem getting rid of someone if they're a nuisance because it is private property, but just for your police officers to be aware, one to six on Saturday. Thank you, Lee. We're, we're aware of it. Um, the permitting process, I believe they hired an extra duty officer. Um, but so even if uh, they, there is no extra duty officer, I'll have um, officers swing through there from time to time anyway, just to make sure everything's going well over there. Appreciate that. I know that the permit did go through and it was just a matter of a heads up for your officers in case someone wanders off the property and are causing problems. The police officer will have to stay on the property. I want your guys to be aware. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, and then I don't know if there was a, a question at the library or if it was just 
the note for everyone to turn on their camera if they're speaking, please. Uh, we can't hear you at the library. Um, no one else has a question. All right. Uh, before we move on, I just had a quick question. We've hit 23 of 46 voting members. Is that a quorum? It's exactly half. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Then we can finally approve all those minutes and stuff. Yay. Diane, uh, could you ask for a motion? Yes, you know. I'll make the motion to approve our last three months minutes. So, I will... um, February, no, March, April, and May um, minutes. Um, can I get a second? I will second that motion. Okay. Um, all in favor, aye. In I say everyone on Zoom, could you use the uh, raise hand uh, emote? Uh, it should be at the kind of the bottom of your screen. There's a reaction that says raise hand. Uh, it makes it just easier to count all the eyes. Thank you. And then at the library, it's uh, it's the only voting members of the library are, are you and, and D Darlene, right? Mm-hmm. Do you both approve? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, you can go ahead and put your hands down now. All righty, thank you, um, Lieutenant. Thank you, everyone. Here. Okay, we're going to go and move on to Carmen, LCI. Oh, do, do we want to do the no, nays and abstains for the, the vote? Well, no, it would be online for you guys because it would be just the two of us here. So if you guys want to go ahead and abstain. I say, does anyone, I say, approved. so we got the approvals. Does anyone not yes. approve the last three months? Does anyone have a nay vote? You shouldn't. Yeah, does anyone have any abstentions? No. Seeing none, all right, thank you. All right, um, Carmen. Thank you very much. Um, good evening to everyone. I hope you all are doing well. I will make my presentation as short as possible. I was out for actually half the month, so I don't have my usual 11 pages. I have only four, but I will cut it in half. I'm starting out with conversations regarding issues in the neighborhood. Number one, I spoke several times to Alder Miller regarding the condition of 118 Grand Avenue. Specifically, we've spoken about the overflowing dumpster, the litter around the dumpster, and the graffiti on the walls and the fence. I called and spoke with the owner of the plaza, Carol Leung, regarding the conditions of the plaza and asked that she address all the trash issues immediately. I participated in a Zoom meeting hosted by Alder Miller with Steve Fontana to discuss the next step to initiate change at the 118 Grand Avenue Plaza. It was decided that Alder Miller would write a letter to Carol Leon outlining the issues at the plaza and invite her to a Zoom meeting at Carol's convenience to listen to the community's concerns and develop a resolution plan. I've also had conversations with Jeffrey Moreno, who's a project manager here at LCI to get his take on the 118 Grand Avenue Plaza situation and ask for his specific recommendations for the resolution of the issues. Together, we determined that the issues with the smoke shop were really making the situation worse and they must be addressed immediately. Specifically, we talked about the activities at the smoke shop being criminal and hoping that the police department of the city of New Haven would be really helpful <clears throat> in trying to curb the activity of illegal drug dealing, prostitution, and excessive loitering. I also drove with Alder Santiago down Lombard Street to look at a specific property that he deemed dangerous to children. Frank Diamore, the deputy director at LCI, and I then visited the site Alder Santiago is concerned about to evaluate the situation. We met with Wilson, quote, Porky Reyes, and we all agreed that it must be fenced off to avoid children from playing on the city-owned property. Currently, Frank is working on the installation of a fence by our contractor. 
I've also spoken with Mr. Eddie Rodriguez regarding the garage at 15 Walcott Street. This garage is in danger of collapsing and was referred by me to Jose Romero, a demolition expert at the building and inspection department, who issued an order to demolish the garage. The owner, however, has not complied. Jose has referred this case to the Corporation Council. I will follow up with Jose Romero and keep an eye on this situation. Last month, I mentioned that the Department of Public Works was short on staff and could not clean up the Humphrey and Lombard Street underpass. Please know that I have not forgotten that this needs to get done and I will continue to monitor and follow up on this issue. I spoke this morning with the resident of Fairhaven, Mr. Eddie Rodriguez, regarding bell sounds that he had heard all through the night, two nights ago. He suspected it came from Fairhaven's middle school's clock. I then contacted the Board of Education regarding the situation. They have investigated the situation and concluded that the bells have been disconnected from the clock a long time ago. The school's clocks were not the cause of the noise. I then initiated a conference call between the Board of Ed, Mr. Rodriguez, and myself. We explained the findings to Mr. Rodriguez and are waiting for another call from him if he hears these bell sounds or the school clock sounds again. The city's homeless outreach coordinator and I are rescheduling our meeting to visit two homeless encampments in Fairhaven. One is at the end of Poplar Street, the other is behind 235 Grand Avenue. I attended the Grand Avenue Main Street meeting on May 6th and it was fantastic. Lots of great ideas and lively discussions about the future of Grand Avenue, about what it could look like. It was a great charrette style visioning meeting and improved lighting on Grand Avenue was discussed. I also attended the Ferry Street Public Improvements meeting and it was also very informative and productive. All participants contributed excellent ideas to the discussion. Ferry Street lighting levels and traffic calming measures were at the top of the discussions. My understanding is that there is money for these public improvements. So it's not a matter of whether it will happen, but when it will happen. And hopefully it will happen very soon. I called the building owner of Carr's Package Store on Clinton Avenue regarding his tenant's bright blinking lights at night. And he will relay the message to the ma manager of Carr's that must be dimmed and turned off at night. Cynthia and Rod Rivera and myself, Cynthia is the public space inspector at the Department of Public Works, will begin meeting to address bulk trash and debris issues all over Fairhaven again beginning this month. Six cases were closed this month, 15 new cases were opened. Uh, one was, is ready for a citation. And another one, a notice of violation was already sent. I called Bill Caron regarding the front and backyards of the Atwater Senior Center. Those needs to, that needs to be mowed. He said he'll get it done by tomorrow afternoon. <clears throat> and of note, last month, LCI's maintenance crew began mowing city-owned lots and property. They also collected 5.5 tons or 11,020 pounds of illegally dumped bulk trash and debris in Fairhaven. That's quite a lot. Um, in spite of the fact that they're not doing it as often because they're mowing right now. So there's been a lot of trash that they picked up over the, you know, the last several months. We have a bulk trash and debris problem in Fairhaven. And uh, we're trying to educate people to understand that they cannot just put bulk trash out on the sidewalk and expect it to be picked up. We want people to know that there's a process and the process is calling the Public Works Department and making an appointment. That's going to take some time. It hasn't been done in a very, very long time. But we are beginning to try to bring that home to the people in Fairhaven. And that's all for my report. I'll take any questions. Is there a question for the library? Uh, I see none on Zoom either. Ooh. Good evening, Carmen. I, I would like to ask Carmen. Oh. Oh, yes, actually, actually, Robbie please. Roberts is on the. Uh... Good evening, Carmen. Good evening, Robbie. How are you? Good. How are you? Listen, I have a few you. questions. Um, I noticed, uh, dump, um, you know, the dumpsters, they're being placed in, in a lot of the streets in Fairhaven. 
And I'm wondering, uh, do they still have someone checking them out for permits and stuff when they're parked on the streets? I've actually, yes, I've actually called. Um, there's a wonderful woman, Cynthia Rivera, who does look at that when they put them on the street, they have to have a permit. Uh, so Cynthia Rivera does look at it. Um, I haven't seen very many myself, but Cynthia's out in Fairhaven basically every day. And uh, she will look, she will get out to see if there's a permit on the dumpster. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it's being done because when I had to do mine, I paid for a permit. Exactly. I'm, I'm hoping that everybody else pays for one also. Yes, they have to, especially if it's on public space. Sec second of all, second of all, we got a, uh, we got a, very big crowd here tonight and I want to um, let everyone know in here that a lot of these properties which I discussed with you the other day that are not home occupied um, they're not maintaining their properties and for everyone in this room I hope that if they got someone next to them that are not maintaining these properties that they get a hold of you and let them know that they have to maintain the properties. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. We did have, <coughs> if I can interject here, we did observe no MO, M-O-W, May, uh, because uh, my understanding is that there is, uh, the bees need to be able to pollinate. And so we did not enforce mowing in May at all. Uh, but we are sending out notices of violations, the cases that are opened up. The beginning of June, uh, throughout the summer, we will be enforcing grass cutting, for example, bush trimming, that kind of stuff. We will yeah, be doing that. And I would hope that people will call me, and I'll actually put my number again. I do it all the time. My number again, so people can easily reach me with complaints if they find, like you have found, that people are not complying with their property maintenance obligations. Right, because it hurts the whole neighborhood. Absolutely. All right, Carmen, thank you. You're doing a great job. Um, I'll be in touch. Yes, keep in touch. Carmen, can you share your um, number on the yes, chat? I'm do I don't right know. now. Awesome. Because we have, I have a, the people across the street just sold their house. And I believe the owners are from New York. And they're already, I, I think they, started moving in sometime this week and they're already putting trash outside um and I'm not sure you know but I do know that this is an ongoing issue when like people from out of state purchase properties and then you know rent them to other people and then they don't maintain and I want to be um I want to be a little proactive on that and not wait for it to escalate so I would be um appreciative if you share your number Yes, it's on, it's on the chat now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lee, did you have a statement for Carmen? Uh, yes, information I have. There is uh, a business owner on Grand Avenue, experienced restaurant tour, who is interested in the space in the Pequot Plaza. For those of you who don't know, that's where Grand Cafe used to be. And he is interested in the possibility of doing a la Latino um, um, themed coffee shop. Hola. So uh, I would love, because I know, Carmen, that you're in contact with the owner of the plaza. His number one concern or question is, what, what is, what is the, the rent going to be? What's the monthly rent? I'd like to connect you and economic development with him and with her, but let's start with if she could answer what is her bottom line <clears throat> in terms of how much she wants, because it would be very wonderful to have any coffee shop in that location. Thank we'll you. We'll definitely uh, talk to Carol uh, and, and, and bring them together. Um, let me know, let's talk or let's chat later on. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, she's been very interested to get someone as soon as possible to occupy that space. This guy is ready, but he but the factor is going to be the rent. So the the first question to her okay. is if she could say what's her bottom line in terms of how much she expects as a monthly rent for the space, and we can talk okay. offline. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's exciting news. Okay, guys. Anything else, Carmen? That's all I have, unless other, you know, people have more questions for me. Okay. Any other questions? I see none online. Excuse me? I see I see no questions on Zoom. Okay. Uh, you're you're off the mic a little bit there, so we oh, can't hear you. And Jayron will be doing the quarterly report for the Civil Review Board quarterly. So um, this is what I thought was going to be just an announcement on the end, but since it's in the middle, I'm just going to let you guys know that. Pay attention to that. That'll be coming up soon. <laughs> update, Catherine. Oh, Kathleen, I'm sorry. Let's say I do not see. She's here. Kathleen in, oh, okay. She's okay. here with us. Okay. Hi everyone, it's so great to be here in person. Uh, I don't have a specific update as to a project that has moved to the next phase. It doesn't mean something has stopped, it's just that right now I don't have anything to report about, um, again, something that's moved to the next phase. Um, overall, things are open, uh, as, as Lee is, said he's going to mention about the events taking place, a lot happening in Fairhaven. Uh, as well as citywide. Annual events uh, are taking place, the bike race in September, fireworks, uh, the mm -hmm. Amistad's coming back July 4th weekend as well. Oh, sorry, this is over my phone. Um, so look out for, um, for that information that it should be um, out, in, out in the press uh, periodically as these, as these come out. Um, again, Lee is going to talk about um, more specific Fairhaven events. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please let me know. No, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, I see none on Zoom. Secretary. <clears throat> uh, can you repeat that, Diane? Sorry? Uh, can you repeat that into the mic? Oh. Uh, my next agenda item is the recording, Secretary. Uh, we're supposed to have a light discussion and an introduction. Uh, Christina Griffin. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Christina. How are you? Hi. Um, my name is Christina Griffin, and I have been a Fairhaven resident for over 25 years, I think. And um, so I've been joining the community meetings for a while. I think my parents are in here somewhere. And I had been wanting to kind of get involved some way. And so when the recording secretary position opened up, I thought that this was a perfect opportunity for me to get involved. I am a New Haven teacher. So that means um, I'm naturally administrative and organized and it's right up my alley. <laughs> so I was um, looking for an opportunity to join and obviously always willing to just grow and learn. So that's it. I just wanted to show face and, um, you know. All right. Thank Christina, you very much. What, um, where, do you where do you teach and what subjects and ages? And can you tell us a little bit about that? So I teach third grade. Um, so that's the eight-year-olds elementary. And I'm currently um, at the charter school on State Street. I'm at um, Booker T. Washington. I was at a school in Bridgeport prior to that for four years. And then four years prior to that, I was at Lincoln Bassett in New Haven as well. So I've been doing this for a while now. Amazing. All right, any other questions or comments? I just want to thank Christina for stepping up um, to fill 
or to apply herself to a candidacy to fill a role that was recently vacated. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I want to second that. Um, I've known Christina to be kind and responsible um, and deeply committed um, to helping young people to grow and develop um, as well as herself. And so the fact that she's coming to contribute um, to our community in this way, um, yeah, is a great gift to us. I'm really glad you're here, Christina. Thanks for stepping up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you have gotten a lot of um, runs on how well you are. So we're looking forward to, to share that with you when you start our, as secretary. Da, Lisa, da, so you here. Yeah, Diane, point of order, point of order. Um, I, I, I wanna let Lisa speak obviously, but we have to ask if there's anyone else that's interested in the position in order to determine whether or not we need to have a vote. So but I thought we had already done that in one of our other meetings that that was not a question and it was still just that one person. So it, it, I'm it, not it only, yeah, no, it only applies that we have a vote if there is anyone else that is interested. I, I don't know, know of anyone, but we need to ask in fairness. <clears throat> okay. Right. Is anyone else interested? And then we know they not. But go ahead. Anyone else interested? This is Alder Crespo, if I may. Yes, Alder. Just a point of order. Uh, even if. We can't hear you. We we lost Alder Crespo. I I believe that what he was probably going to say is regardless as to what one person or a vote, we have to. This person is acting until the actual next election. But the only reason to ask is to see if we have two people that want to act. I believe that's probably what he was going to say. Uh, but no matter, they're not appointed Everybody, as yes. the secretary. We understand, Lee. Yeah. That's a okay. weak act. I don't see anyone else stepping up. Exactly. Like it has to be. Yeah. All right, Lisa. I Bye. just wanted to personally thank Christina, too. Um, it's a great opportunity to get more involved in, in your community and to understand and and how how things operate and, and processes and how we're all interrelated um and uh the people here are fabulous and i'm sure you know half of them here already so you could attest to that but i'd be pleased to talk to you offline you know at maybe next week sometime absolutely i just wanted to throw in there to say lisa we, you have been such a valuable recording secretary to us. We really appreciate that you've been with us as long as you have, that you've put so much work into it. And for those that don't know, uh, Lisa is stepping down because she's retiring. So good for her, good on her, best of luck to you. And I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything, but I wanted to just say thank you on behalf of the entire community management team. I also just want to say Lisa is fantastic and she's the kind of person where I'll send a haphazard email and she'll make it happen quickly and efficiently and she's amazing. Um, and thank you so much for your commitment and your can-do attitude. It's just been great being doing, doing this with you. Um, and if you, the other thing, just a logistical thing is thinking about training. Um, that might just be something for you guys to touch base on, just the Google Doc and all of that. Thank you very much. Diane, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Okay, we're doing environment and immigration. Uh, 
Um, I don't even see that. Um, uh, we're kind of losing you, Diane. I can't even see that. I'm sorry, guys. I my glasses are need to be redone here, so I'm <laughs> I'm having a hard time seeing it. it Diane, do you want me to go ahead and announce no. the person, or do you, you're okay. looking? You got it. Is he here? Oh, Nicole Davis, save the sound, update. I think I thought, was Matthew oh. Reiser first? Did we already go over that? No. Okay, I think Matthew Reiser was first on the agenda. Excuse <clears throat> me? And I think Matthew Reiser was previous on the agenda to Nicole, if that's okay. And he's here. Whatever okay, you wanna so do. So we're going down to the next person? Yeah, Matthew Reiser is first on the agenda. It's supposed Hi, my name is Matt Reiser. I'm an employee. Okay, with so I can bear, excuse me, I hear you now, but I could barely hear you, Abby. Um, so can you go ahead, Mr. Matt? Hi, my name is Matt Reiser. I'm a uh, environmental consultant with a company called CMG Environmental. And I'm here to talk briefly about a project when it, one of my clients is proposing, a client is Circle of Life. It's the uh, uh, transfer station on uh, Middletown Ave. I have a PowerPoint presentation. I uh, can I? Sh I'm not exactly sure how to share my screen with everybody, so I can run uh, through it real quickly. If, if you go towards the bottom of your Zoom, right in the middle, should be a little share screen box with an arrow. Okay. Share screen. And Matt, okay. while you're do, Matt, while you're doing that, you do remember, right? It's five minutes you have. It's a, yeah, I, I don't even think I'll have that long. I don't okay. even think I need that much time. Great. Can you see the uh, presentation? Uh, no. All right, hold on a sec. My apologies. <clears throat> um. Oh, me? To share. How about now? Yes. There you go. Hey, there you go. it worked. All right. So, um, again, uh, Matt Reiser, CMG Environmental. It's a project for Circle of Life for the facility in Middletown Ave. We're proposing to uh, install a new structure on site. And I'll just give you a quick little background. <clears throat> the facility operates a solid waste volume reduction plant and transfer station at 158-158R Middletown Ave. And uh, the facility currently accepts clean wood for processing at the volume reduction plant and uh, construction and demolition debris at the transfer station. C and D construction demolition debris is currently dumped inside the dome and then recoverable recyclables are removed and stored for resale. The facility is proposing to construct a hoop building on the west side of the dome to allow better uh, manual and mechanical sorting of waste to remove recoverable recyclables. This structure would basically be about, would be constructed on top of concrete block walls, allowing it to be about 24 feet high at the center and about 30 feet wide at the base. It'll be about 30 feet long and it would basically allow vehicles to back in, <clears throat> excuse me, dump their material and allow, um, manual and mechanical sorting under cover to basically be more environmentally friendly 
And then once the material has been picked over and recoverable recyclables have been removed, then the remainder of the waste will be pushed inside the dome. This particular uh, addition requires an amendment to the facility permit uh, that they have with the state, the Department of Environment, Energy and Environmental Protection. And as a result, it requires an environmental justice public participation plan and hence the reason I'm here making the pitch to you all. And the facility would like to construct this building as, as soon as they can, basically as soon as the authorization re is received from the state. So that's my pitch. Um, and I guess so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll field questions. And as I was told, basically, I, my understanding is this does not count as the quote unquote public meeting to pitch the idea. So it was suggested I come present before your organization and then ask for a meeting time to make the formal presentation pitch. So do you think you have a letter requesting that? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. Anybody has anything else? Any questions? Uh, it looks like Nicole Davis from Save the Sound has a question. Hi. Hi, Matt. I was just curious, um, does this permit modification or the building change the amount of materials that'll be processed or is it just changing how things are covered? The latter. The uh, We're making no changes to the material accepted, no changes to the quantity of material accepted, simply changing the operation so that it's um, more efficient, more environmentally friendly process. Anyone else? Right. Any other questions? All right. Ms. For a pay for your health <clears throat> clinic, please. Um, I think that the next one is Nicole from Save the Sound. Well, that's not what's on here. But okay. Thank you. Um, it's, yeah, it's the next one on the on the June agenda. Oh, before we get to that, uh, Mark has his hand raised as well. Okay. What is it, Mark? Yeah, I thought you missed me, so I shut my mic back off. Um, I just wanted to know, so that project won't have any negative impact to the environment or anything like that. It's just going to be improvement for the process that they're working on. Correct. Correct. Okay. So you, you're pitching it for the reason? The, the way the process, to my understanding, the way the permit modification process works for the state is we we've, we've made this proposal to the state we've already submitted our application to amend the permit and um because uh, <clears throat> the facility is located in an quote unquote environmental justice area we are required to go through and um, educate the public about the proposed change to the facility and um, find out if there's any concern so we were, uh, yeah. And I, I, I'm not aware of any environmental, uh, negative environmental impact that this facility, or excuse me, that this amendment or this new structure will have to uh, facility operations or more importantly, the surrounding environment. Okay, thank you. Well, so, so Matt, in the, in the, in the um, <laughs> chat, I suggested to you, the next step is for you to, pick a date, time, location, could be on Zoom, send an invitation uh, to our correspondence secretary, Abby, and then okay. it's our job to circulate that so that those members that want to hear more deeply have any questions and concerns can then attend that meeting, which is then your meeting, which would be the official meeting. Okay, fantastic. Right, I will. Thank you. I will do that following this meet, or you know, a few days following this meeting. I appreciate all of your help, Lee. It's been uh, very, very good to talk to you, and thank you for yeah. the opportunity to present right. it. Um, 
later on, I think that Matt has a question. Where did your back go? I feel like I'm not seeing people. Sorry, we, we're losing your voice. Out. A lot of them, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. A lot of them will not have access to Zoom. Does it have to be on Zoom? No, it does no, not. No, it does not. Okay, so can we just put that as a second option here? Absolutely. Because we are very interested in being at this meeting. Sure. If it needs to be in person, we'll do it in person. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we're still uh, having trouble hearing you, Diane. You still can't hear me? Now we're, now good. Again. Now we're good. No, I'm sorry. Um, Susan, the guard, please. I think the next this one on the agenda is Nicole from Save the Sound. Do you see her on the agenda? Yeah, I do see her on the agenda, but I thought we talked about Save the Sound before. No. I'm, no. I'm losing track with everyone. Didn't oh, it's OK. No, we didn't yet. Yeah. Sorry, and I can be. I'll be brief. We have um, a couple things going on in Fairhaven. Um, for you, those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicole Davis. I'm the watershed coordinator with Save the Sound. Um, and I'm the project manager for the Mill River Trail project that's being constructed right now at Haven and Exchange. And hopefully people have seen all the exciting stuff that is going on at that street corner right now. Um, and Sean with Slate Projects, I'll talk about more of that later, but there's a lot of really interesting projects. We are converting, actually we have converted that dead end roadway into a green space. Um, today, the sidewalks were poured and it looks like by the end of next week, um, construction will be over. Um, planting is still delayed. Um, there's a plant shortage in the Northeast. So we're having a hard time sourcing all the plants we need um, to fill in the space, but we are we are slowly accumulating that and hopefully we'll have students of the John S. Martinez School out um, in the next few weeks, kind of getting some plants in the ground and turning this into a really fantastic green space. Um, and once we can actually guarantee we'll have plants on sites, I will coordinate with um, Abby and Lee and the rest of the executive team for the management team. And I will make sure that the invite gets out to as many of the community members as we can with as much notice as possible. Um, but we're really excited about the way the space is shaping up. Um, beyond that, we have, I think a number of people have been involved in the process of the Urban Waters Initiative, um, where two community leaders were just tired as of the beginning of this week, um, Sochi Garcia and Daniela Flores, who are both members of the Fairhaven community, and hopefully you will be seeing their faces around here over the next several months. Um, this project is really kind of engaging the community and using the photo voice method to get a sense of what assets and challenges within the community are, and then using that to help kind of shape projects to help um, either protect assets and make sure that they're viewed as the asset that they're supposed to be, or find areas and venues that we can transform some of the improvement areas. Um, and so keep your eyes open um, over the next few weeks or the next few days. Um, there should be kind of a request coming out. We'll be recruiting 10 community researchers as part of the photo voice method, which is a stipend, a paid stipend um, participation where people will be provided with cameras and, tra and um, trained to use photojournalism to kind of document what they see within the community. Mm -hmm. um, and we will also be at Quinnipiac River Fest. Um, I'm really excited. I'm on the other side of the river. So I'm super excited that this is happening again this year because we've missed this festival. Um, but we'll have more information about the photo voice process as part of that. And I apologize for kind of running so fast. I was trying to compress a lot into just a few minutes. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll put my email address in the chat too, if anyone wants to reach out separately. You apologize and we appreciate you doing what you just did. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anyone clinic, Ms. Lagarde, Dr. Lagarde. Yeah, hi, this is Dominic Serafin. I'm with um, 
uh, Fairhaven and Dr. Lagarde can join us this evening. Um, also joined today by Oliver Gaffney, who was presented last week, uh, as well as Janine Davey and Vina Capadia with our with Fairhaven. So uh, in May minutes, uh, we presented the parking lot. I'd like to just, there's a, a slide deck I'll share. I know we have about four minutes um, and so we'll be very quick on it. Um, so let me share it. Okay, um, so as we're located at 374 Grand Avenue, uh, but just as you come off from uh, uh, New Haven City and you come up Grand Avenue, you'll see the clinic. So this is our current situation. Uh, Woolsey uh, Street, there's those three houses that we talked about last week to uh, bring down. And to create more parking, we have about 42 or so spaces currently. and uh, creating more parking uh, is, is, is a challenge. Um, and so I'm gonna turn this over to Oliver. Last time he showed us the, the flow, the parking diagram. I, I will say also that we completed an environmental assessment, uh, which was since this project uh, has received federal funding, we needed to complete a full uh, environmental assessment on taking down the buildings and what, what would the impact be. Uh, it's an 88 page document. Uh, HRSA has uh, found no uh, significant impact. Now it's open for public comment. So we'll put advertisement in the paper, uh, bring it to the library and it's a 15 day comment period. Our email address is on top. If anyone wants a copy of the environmental assessment, happy to share that with people. Um, we can also post it on our, our website. So uh, Oliver, real quick, if you can go through it. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I realize we're at probably at three minutes now and there's a little bit we could talk about, a lot of it we can talk about. I'm gonna do the former. So uh, the slide we have up in front of us looks very similar to what we presented last month. It's 67 parking spaces. Just wanna respond to a couple of comments that we got about certain aspects of the design, particularly drainage and lighting and screening from both the street and to the adjacent neighbors. So Dominic, if you can please advance to the next slide. Sure. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, so there was a question about lighting and you know, how are we gonna make sure that the lights were not shining into the neighbor's you know, yards or into their apartments, sort of like that image there with the big red X on it. That's what we want to avoid. And not every single LED light is the same. We are going to be looking at a type of fixture that has a lot of different distribution options, sort of the different little cones that are in that other image. We are going to pick the right distribution for each part of the light pole and put the light just on the parking lot. And we will use what are called backlight controls, little pieces of metal on each pole to prevent the light from shining backwards into one of the adjoining residential lots. So that's that's one thing that we don't have on the lights right now that uh, will be added as an upgrade. The other thing that we're looking at doing from a security and safety standpoint is to use dynamic lighting controls, motion controls, and be able to keep the light levels down a little bit during the nighttime, not have them on at 100%, but to set them at a, a slightly lower level. And as somebody comes into the parking lot, say a resident or a neighbor who's parking there overnight, the lights can slowly come up to say 80% while they get into their car and drive off you know, for, for work or whatever, and then the lights can go back down. So we're, we're looking to be providing lighting that will be responsible and uh, you know, work with the, the community and Fairhaven community health needs. Uh, Dominic is showing us some shade trees. We're looking to provide as much shade in this parking lot as possible. We are going to use some native salt tolerant coastal trees around the edge that will provide some shade and evaporative cooling for the pavement areas that we need to support parking. Uh, next slide. One of the drainage strategies that we're going to be looking at is using what are called tree filter units to basically put a tree into a catch basin and get the best of both worlds. We will catch and filter water that comes into these units, settle out any trash or sand, salt, anything else that would wash in. And we will overflow the water to irrigate these trees. 
And over time, they will grow and attain a much larger size than would normally be possible in an urban environment. So uh, we're excited to have those in several parts of the site uh, contiguous to the pavement. We're gonna have some smaller flowering trees in areas that we might not be able to get a, a larger tree to grow successfully. But again, we're looking at resilient native trees like serviceberry and hawthorn that are tolerant of those conditions and will add a little bit of shade and a little bit of ornamental interest. Uh, next slide. Along the edge, and this was a, a question raised by Carmen Mendez, is how are we going to treat the uh, areas in between the parking edge and the nearby homes? There is currently privacy fencing about four or five feet tall along those uh, uh, perimeter areas. We're going to be adding several more shade trees at about 20, 25 foot intervals to again, add some shading to the parking lot, but also filter some of the views to and from the parking lot. So people who are living adjacent to the site don't feel like you know, they're in a just display case and having people looking at them and vice versa. But it will also allow for eyes on the site from the street and from those adjacent properties if say the lights turn on at night or somebody hears something, they can certainly look in and see whether or not something is going on and potentially call it in uh, if it's an issue. We're also looking at doing some lower plantings, things that are not too tall along the street edge. So again, anybody who's, who's driving by, walking by, sees something going on in there that should not be going on, uh, they can, can call it in. Uh, next slide. Oh, okay. So uh, that transitions back to me. Yeah. So uh, we will be going to the Board of Zoning um, for submission in June, and there's a Board of Zoning hearing in July. And the two variances that we need to ask for, uh, one is related to the, uh, the conversion of the residential uh, parking areas uh, into uh, residential properties for parking. And the other is a, a variance for, as you can see in the front of these residential homes, there's no parking uh, area. And so you have to get a variance if there's uh, parking on the, the front area. So those are the variances that we'll be submitting with the Board of Zoning in June. I also wanted to bring attention to the uh, proposed building project that we brought to uh, the management team in April. Uh, we asked for a letter of support. We were going to our Congresswoman Dolores office for uh, funding for this project. I'm happy to report that we were shortlisted on that. And so that's a very good thing. And we are now going waiting for the appropriations bill. Um, so 14 projects were um, moving forward on that and we're one of them. Um, so the proposed uh, building site is adjacent to the existing 374 grand uh, facility. And what we're looking at is to build a uh, exam rooms, clinical space. It's a clinical building to expand operations, uh, expand the number of patients that we can see. And we have a design team that's been selected. And what we'd uh, like to get is input from uh, community members. And, and we will uh, share the dates and we can do it via Zoom. We can do this in person, uh, June the 29th. Uh, and so two sessions, the first session is in a health center facility, what attributes of that are important to people so we can design this properly. And then the second session in August is on the imagery of what should like the building look like and what should the interiors look like. And so the first set, the first step is more schematic de uh, design on what the programs are and how the facility is shaped. The second is getting into more uh, design development in, in very specifics of what the uh, building looks like. Um, so uh, we have our email address here, community relations at Fairhaven FHCHC, if anyone has any comments uh, or suggestions on that. Um, thank you, and I'll take questions if there are any. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Rob Roberts, Ward 15, Ward Chairman. Um, these proposals, yours and um, the other development, 
we need to see this in person. This is very hard for us to understand. We barely can hear the conversation. Um, we need these proposals um, in front of us so we can see exactly what your plans are and understand what your plans are. Right now, every, uh, everything is muffled. We can barely hear. And um, I hope that we can organize something to get in front of us. Thank you. Uh, happy to do that. If uh, the management team could advise us how best to do that, happy to do that. I just wanted to make a just a brief point that uh, we are still kind of working on the technology of the hybrid meetings and stuff like that. Um, it seems that the in-person meeting this month is a little muffled and whatnot. So uh, hopefully we'll be improving that in the future. So it's kind of a equal experience, whichever one you can do. I'm gonna second that by saying that we'll, we'll go and invest in that uh, better microphone and we may need a set of speakers attached to the computer uh, um, at the library so that people can hear more clearly there. Uh, in the meantime, okay. what might be helpful would be that our minutes include if the clinic can put the plans somewhere online, then we can put a link in the minutes and then Robbie and anyone when they get the minutes they can click and they can go and see what the plans are and have a phone number of someone they can call if they have any questions. That That's what I would propose. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. So I, I'm hearing you guys, but once again, this is um, the same from the people here at the library. They're here because they aren't on Zoom, they aren't on a computer. And this is why they say that they're asking that everything would be presented to them in person. So I don't know how that can be worked out, but what I'm saying is that is one of the things that we were trying to, the board was, was trying to make it available to everybody, whether they were on Zoom or not, because as being in a part of the community, they also have a say and not just the people that's on Zoom. So we will figure something out down the road, but that's the question that's going on right now here. And Dominique, that's in no way your fault. That's something we have Excuse to Excuse me? Out. Excuse me? Um, I was just saying that's not the fault of our presenters. That's something we have to work out as a board. Right, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So we, we will send the link and we can post all the materials. I, I've shared this slide deck already with uh, Abby. So um, absolutely. Diane, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I'm oh, sorry. The magic board for, I'm not, see, I can only see the board. Um, the match board and representation from Fairhaven management team. Um, thanks. Hi, um, my name is Marshall Lefemina. Um, for those of you that I haven't met in the last six months since I started talking with you all, nice to meet you. Otherwise, it's good to see the rest of you. Um, this is a refresher. We are bringing a manufacturing and technical community hub to the Fairhaven area. area. Um, it's a little bit later than we expected and we're in the process of um, um, doing everything we can to make sure that it happens. Um, but all indications are that we are still on the move and we will be in the neighborhood bringing employment and jobs and opportunity and wealth and um, a lot of community benefits um, that we're really very proud of in conjunction with the city and the community foundation. And of course, the critical partner to all of this is in fact, the management team. Um, we started with you six months ago. Uh, we wouldn't want to know we were welcome, wanted to know that you saw value in what we were doing. And because um, this is all driven on coming to the community and being a part of the community and directed by the community. 
So we're at a place right now where we're filed, we're real, we're incorporated, we have attorneys, we've got everything we need, and we are um, needing now to sit up, submit our for, final paperwork to the IRS, which means we have to have our core board. Um, we have said from the beginning, um, maybe not to this group, but we have said out there in the world that we wanted to hold a permanent seat for the management team for into perpetuity for the, someone from the management team to be sitting on our board of directors. And so we've spoken, and of course, as you, as you all know, um, we need you to approve that that is acceptable to you, that you, know, you have a voice um, in the project now and going forward. And in the interest of, um, uh, if nothing else, um, awareness, I mean, Lee, Lee has been by our side from day one, and he's willing to take that role for us and for you um, as we launch. Um, so it's a two part uh, question, um, I guess, it's basically to ask you all um, how we can proceed with doing that because we need to have an organizational meeting with our board and your seat is the only one that we haven't been able to confirm until we got to, to, you know, to today. So um, that will help us in raising funds um, and not having to, being our own standalone approved 501c3, we won't have to have a fiscal sponsor. I mean, we have a fiscal sponsor in the city. So please understand this happens no matter what, but we can apply for more grants, more opportunities, expansions. There's a lot of, um, um, urgency to get this thing done because the government is going to move slowly. So I don't know what the protocol is. Um, so I just kind of throw it out there. I don't know what the next steps would need to be. I don't, Lee, I don't know if you want to say anything. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, so so uh, it is true, um, um, Marsha and everyone else, that I have been working in support of this project. I think it's a good project. But in order for there to be a representative of the management team, this has to be open to anyone that is a voting member of the management team. And uh, if there's anyone else that is interested in workforce development in this opportunity to work with someone who wants to bring, um, to bring uh, jobs into our community, then we would have to have a vote here's what people need to understand very clearly. I work for a funder of nonprofits. If no one else were to step up, I conditionally can step up. <clears throat> if there's an election and I'm elected, it still has to be conditional because unlike a regular civilian person, I cannot make a decision for myself about being on the board of nonprofit. It has to be approved by my boss because we fund nonprofits. So as long as people are clear about that, then we can proceed however people want to proceed with either uh, an election if there's someone else who's interested or uh, an appointment if people are not in interested and want to have me represent. But please clearly understand that it is, is provisional until, uh, because I didn't want to bring this up with my employer if I'm not the person, if someone else gets appointed. I would urge anyone interested in this and connected to Fairhaven, this is a good uh, expenditure of your time because this will result in jobs in our community. And um, so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. I would like okay, to add so on, Marcia, I'm if sorry. I may. If you, I, I'm sorry, baby. Can you please tell us how quickly do you need this? Yesterday, really. Yesterday, very, yesterday? Yeah, yeah very, very okay. quickly. Um, I, just because um, there's new grant opportunities, there's more things coming down the road, like immediately another grant application from the state is due. I mean, we can work around it. It's just preferable not to, because we want right. to have an organizational meeting just as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, let me just say, um, we want more involvement than this seat. 
This is a board seat because it's the protocol and what has to happen, but there will be an advisory board. There will be representatives from your organization. We're going to ask you again for an advisory board because uh, the, uh, uh, I'm going to say Gateway Community College, I can go on down. People from the Community Foundation who are not sitting on the board will be on the advisory board. There are many, many opportunities to have a voice. This is just to help us get launched, this is the first five seats of what we project to be a 15, ultimately a 15 seat board, okay? It's the five odd number seats just to get us going so we can file with the IRS. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, if I'm not correct, I think that um, we would definitely have to vote on actually getting Lee until he finds out if his boss is going to let him stay on the board or not. Um, and someone else, this is the second time that we've heard about this. So I would ask if we could have a few more days for other people that are here tonight for the first time actually hearing this would like to be involved. So I'm not, I'm not talking a week, I'm talking a couple of days <laughs> for, for us and, to get together and try to figure out how we could do this to help you guys out. And, 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 and to your point earlier, I, I will come, if you throw together a quick meeting, I mean, I, I will come to Fairhaven in any time. I mean, I'll, you know, unless I've got something absolutely urgent, people want to sit right. down and talk about this right. and, and give me a time and a place, I, I will be there. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Diane, can we yes. just ask to see if there's anyone that's on the on right now that would be interested? Just <clears throat> and they would like some more information, is what they're saying. That's why I'm asking for a couple of days. I'm only asking for that because they wanted more information before they made a firm decision on whether they would have the, the time and the expertise to even be on the board. So mm -hmm. Dennis um, Silvestri is trying to ask a question. Yeah, um, I. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody hear me good? Yes, no. Dennis, I yeah. hear you. As a um, vocational instructor, licensed trade contractor in Connecticut, um, I like to know, I, I'm interested in helping out. All right. But I would also like to know a little bit more. Um, maybe perhaps uh, can arrange a phone call or something for tomorrow because I just, I'm spread pretty thin now. I just want to see if I can spread myself a little bit more to help out with this position. Right. Well, or you might just That's want to help, you might want to help out with the program itself because I mean, we're going to be a full blown um, manufacturing company. So we will, we were going to be a company, not just a training. Company. We're going to be hiring, we're going to be no, trainers. Yep. So okay. we, we, Anyway, I'm going over my time. Um, I'm going to. And I was my... just going to say what Dennis was asking. This is exactly what these um, members here are asking. Sure. Just a little bit more information. So. Well, you tell we me how to make up um, time to speak to you, Marcy, to to be able to get a little bit clearer understanding um, from the ones that are interested. Yeah. Come on. Yes, there's one other person want to make a comment quickly. Hi, Marsha. This is Susan Regan. Um, is it possible that you could put kind of some sort of little slide or an email together that we could send out to everyone? Because it is kind of ambiguous. We're really not certain what's going on. Uh, no problem. I'm, I I because wasn't. I'm really I was. Kind of interested. Yeah, I wasn't sure, Susan, because I um this this is the um, I've been there three times, but I never feel like I say it the right way. So I'd be more than happy to. That sure. would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm putting my email address and my cell phone in okay. here i i don't know i mean i'll send something to abby i guess i'll send something to you abby sure. and yeah. um thank you abby is that the right thing to do and then we'll go from there yeah okay. if you send me a slide deck i can um i can distribute it along with the slide deck from fairhaven community health and a follow-up email and ask for people's ask for people to email you if they are interested and I really want to thank you all for the continued support. This is going to be quite amazing. Um, and we're going to knock it out of the park here in Connecticut. I guarantee it. Very good. All, all right. right. Our thank you. Kurt. Hi, everyone. Uh, greetings from your library. Uh, a 
come come see us. Uh, first of all, come see us uh, this weekend uh, at Riverfest on Saturday. Uh, our uh, Lori will be there. I think I'll be there for a while, um, but also come here. Uh, we've got quite a bit coming up um, in this month and more to uh, come uh, event-wise um, in, uh, in the coming weeks and the summer. Um, our youth librarian, Jenny, has, has got a lot of things going on for kids. Um, coming back by popular demand on Saturday, June 18th, um, she will have another opportunity for kids to practice their reading to rabbits. Uh, these are therapy rabbits. They were very popular when they were here uh, back in the spring, and they will be back um, on, on Saturday, June 18th. Um, we, you do have to register for that because of the amount of um, um, outpouring of interest that we had last time. But uh, but just stop by or call us. We can uh, we can get you on if you know a kid that wants to practice their reading or just meet the rabbits. Um, also on that same day, Saturday, June 18th, um, we, we here will be hosting one of the arts and ideas events. Uh, we're gonna have the, um, the award-winning um, uh, spoken word and storyteller, uh, Nestor, the boss, Gomez coming in to do a, um, a presentation on telling your own story. Um, and that program will actually be in Spanish. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, of course, everyone's welcome, but, uh, but that one will be, will be right to uh, the uh, uh, Spanish speakers in, uh, in our area. Uh, so spread the word on that. But like I say, many other things going on. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Thank you, Kirk. All right, um, Mr. McKnight and the literacy volunteers. See here. Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Vincent McKnight. I'm the outreach coordinator for literacy volunteers of Greater New Haven. And my purpose this evening is just to create awareness of the free programs available to adults in the Fairhaven community. Um, literacy Volunteers is one of three affiliates under the Literacy Resource Center that's located at Five Science Park in New Haven. There's New Haven Reads, which focuses on children six to 18 needing tutoring. There's CFAL, which stands for Concepts for Adaptive Learning, which focuses on computer skills for adults and children. And then of course, Literacy Volunteers, we were established in 1975 and incorporated in 1977. And we function as a nonprofit 501c3 organization, providing adult students with the necessary tools to increase their English and reading skills through two core programs. The first program is ESOL, which is English Speakers of Other Languages. These classes focus on enabling adults to learn how to speak, read, write, and understand English. And then we have our basic literacy program for native English speaking adults with low reading skills. These free programs are held in group classes and our individual sessions conducted throughout the greater New Haven area. In addition, we encourage adults interested in volunteering to join us in a number of different areas, including tutoring, fundraising, marketing, event planning, or you can become a, a board member as well. Um, if you or anyone you may know would like to volunteer or if you know an adult who may need our services, we, I can be reached at 203-776-5899. My email is vincentmcknight at lvagnh.org. <laughs> That's vincentmcknight at lvagnh.org. Or please feel free to visit our website, which is www.lvagnh.org. Um, thank you. Are there any questions? Could you repeat your phone number, please? Sure. The number is 203-776-5899. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the mural painting event. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. 
Uh, I'm Sean uh, from Site Projects. Uh, we're a public art uh, nonprofit based in New Haven. Um, so Nicole from Save the Sound uh, already gave us a nice update on the um, Haven and Exchange Street uh, site where um, we're putting up a new mural. So I can be pretty, pretty brief here. Uh, so I just I just wanted to make uh, this announcement and update on a mural that we've commissioned by the artist uh, Frenemy that is happening at this corner. So both um, on Haven Street and wrapping around the corner of the building to Exchange Street. Uh, and it's gonna be at the same site as the new um, green space being constructed um, by Save the Sound. And so the artwork, it's gonna feature um, kind of cartoon versions of native plants and animals of the Mill River. Uh, that will hopefully be uh, reintroduced to the area through the habitat restoration efforts of Save the Sounds projects uh, and the Mill River Trail project in general. Um, so I just wanted to uh, come here and let the neighborhood know what was going on at that location. And if you happen to be nearby, uh, please check it out. And uh, the artist will be there painting until around June 12th, uh, so you can feel free to talk to him or ask him any questions. He's like a really sweet guy and uh, happy to talk with residents. Um, there's also going to be a um, community event on June 11th. Um, that's kind of this joint opening of the green space and the mural. So I can drop a link uh, to the registration page in the chat here. Uh, it's free and uh, registration isn't required, but it just helps us know uh, what to expect or how many people to expect. Um, and I can drop my email in the chat too. So if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, uh, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, and that's all. All righty. I actually happened to drive past there today and you guys are doing a fantastic job. I really like the painting that you guys are putting up on the wall. I love the color purple. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, it was looking really, really good. I just wanted to let you know. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. That is always nice to hear. <laughs> okay. Our alders, um, they all are gone right now. Did uh, Sarah send a... Uh, Alder Crespo is is here in Zoom, yeah. Oh yeah, I see him, okay. Older, Ms. Crespo? He must be not there. I was gonna say, he might be, he tried talking earlier and he cut out a bit, so he might be having, uh, I think he was on his phone, but uh, he's been he's been here throughout the meeting, so right. maybe he'll pop I back know. in. <laughs> okay. Anything else? You know, guys, we are very close to the time of the library closing as well. And I have um, the letter from Sarah that I can okay. go over. Um, so just a few updates from her, and I'll, again, link this as I usually do in the follow-up email coming from the MailChimp. But um, some of the big things are the Strong School Redevelopment Program, um, the release for... I think proposals has just been opened up. So this is developers who can submit proposals for the strong school, which is long awaited. So huge thanks to everybody who worked on that. Um, that's open. So developers are currently submitting those proposals. If you know any developers, um, anyone interested, please share the information with them. Um, there's the Quinnipiac River Survey, which you'll see the QR codes linked to at Quinnipiac River Park. So if you, I filled it out myself, I encourage you to fill it out. Um, details ways <clears throat> to improve the park and it's a great, great thing um, for us to all give our input on. Um, and then the only other things, there's a couple other things detailed that you can read about, but some of the important things are um, the Stream Carnival, which is the first annual carnival at Clinton Avenue School celebrating science and technology for kids, um, is on Sunday. And the Riverfest, which Lee will speak more about, is on Saturday. There's a movie coming up in the park 
string quartet pop-up. There's a lot happening in our, in our neighborhood as well as some mural painting events. So a lot to look forward to. So please read the letter in its entirety, but those are just some brief updates from Alder Miller. Okay. Any other comments from anyone? And can I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, no, uh, Diane, the, there's announcements. I have a couple of announcements to make before we adjourn. Good to go. Good. Keep it under five. Like they're trying to close the library right now. Okay, I understand. So the, the announcements are, so I won't say anything else about Riverfest other than it's on Sunday and it's looking like a beautiful day. Hope you can come Saturday. out. For Saturday. Not, oh, I'm sorry. I meant Saturday, whatever I said, Saturday, one to six, free music, canoeing, the whole nine yards. It's up on our uh, Facebook page and it's announced in the minutes. Second thing I wanted to tell you is that on the 11th of June and on the 24th, we're going to have the the restaurant tour of the restaurants on Grand Avenue, five restaurants through the Festival of Arts and Ideas. If you're interested in going on that tour of the restaurants, the information is on the, the Arts and Ideas Festival website, artidea.org. Then the final thing I wanna tell you is that Reverend Boone was with us. He's from Cathedral of Higher Praise on Grand Avenue. Unfortunately, his wife is in the hospital. So uh, thoughts and prayers for those of you who pray for her, but he wanted us to know that he's working with the school system and with End Hunger Connecticut to do a June 25th informational blitz about summer meals for kids. I'm gonna ask him to send that information to Abby so it'll go in our minutes. But if you're interested in helping raise awareness about the summer food programs for kids, then please be in contact with Pastor Boone at Cathedral of Higher Praise. The information will be in our minutes. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I just wanted to say just real quick under announcements, uh, I am kind of the technical type person for these meetings. Uh, right now, uh, obviously the, the hybrid isn't 100%. Um, and our website's kind of messed up at the moment, but I am personally working on that. And if you have any suggestions, any ideas, anything like that, uh, contact me, but we don't have a website right now. So it's not really easy to do it, but soon I'll get you information to be able to contact me and everything like that. And we can get everything improved and working for everybody. So, yeah. All right. Anything else? Now may I get in a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. Second, Ed. All righty. Good All right. night, everyone. Thank night. you. See you next month. Thank you to everyone who stuck it out. We, we did it. We did it. It was a lot <laughs> on the agenda, full agenda. Got a lot going on yeah, in the summer. Go that away now. Before, though. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, yeah. So Adam. Adam. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Let's... Thank you. Let, I think it'll make a difference at the library if we get them. I'm going to go ahead and go by that microphone.